Nothing says spring to me like fresh produce and picking up a farm share at the local vegetable stand. Here to chat about community supported agriculture right here in Belmont is Tim Carroll, also known as Farmer Tim. Welcome, Tim. Thank you. Happy to be here. Excellent. Well, we're happy to have you. So can you tell me a little bit about how your life path led to farming and to operating a CSA? You know, I, I didn't come to farm farming the traditional way, which is born into a family that did farming for forever. Uh, if you go way back, my farm, my family was all in lumber in, in Canada. So, um, but I moved to Belmont over 35 years ago and bought, you know, a house and bought another house, you know how it goes, and had a huge backyard garden for decades. When my kids were growing up, it was we always had this huge garden. I loved growing food. I grew more food than we could eat. We were giving away food. And I just found this was just something I really, really loved to do. It was my hobby and it brought a lot of joy to me and to my family and to the people that got free food. Um, it, was, it was just all good. And then what happens, uh, which is a great thing and also a scary thing is your kids grow up and they go to college and they leave the house. And I said, what, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? Knowing that retirement was coming and, you know, how am I going to spend my time? And anyone that knows kids, has kids knows that what to do with your time is never a problem when you've got kids at home, because they fill yeah. that all up. Um, and I said, you know, well, what do I love doing? What do I want to do? And I said, well, I just love growing vegetables. I said, why don't I try to kind of go pro? You know, let me let me see if I can actually be a farmer, not just a gardener. And uh, I actually took a class on farm, you know, business planning. And then the program had a, a training farm and I got a plot on their training farm for a couple of years in a row to really learn how do you go from being a gardener to a farmer? And while there's a lot of things that are very similar, I mean, you're still buying the same kind of seeds and putting them into soil and growing the plants, things like weeding and irrigation and, and tillage are completely different as a farm. So yeah, it's just the scale is completely different. And so I decided I learned how to do that, bought myself a farm out in Dudley. Uh, we can talk about that in a bit and, uh, and said, Let, let's just make this thing happen. Fantastic. Well, you led right into it. Why don't you tell me about your farm in Dudley? Okay, so I bought a farm. It's 92 acres, which is um, bigger than my whole neighborhood in Belmont. Um, and we, it's in Dudley. It's uh, a little bit south of Worcester. So it's in Massachusetts, about an hour from here. I wanted to try to find a farm closer. But it turns out that there's not a lot of farms for sale kind of inside 495, um, which is not a surprise. No. And, uh, and it's agricultural preservation restriction land, which is a state designation that says it's got to stay in agricultural preservation forever. And so it's, all, it's been a farm for over 200 years, and it's going to be a farm for the next 200 years. And I think that that's terrific to kind of kind of keep that agricultural, you know, essence in Massachusetts and, and so that people in Massachusetts can get local food. Mm -hmm. So um, I right now only grow on eight acres of my 92 acres. And so I've still got lots of room to expand, uh, thinking about what else to do with the rest of it. Much of it will be more vegetables because uh, when I started the first year, I had half an acre of production. And then over the last few years, we just grow and grow and grow. And it's been great. Wonderful. And you hear people talk about and use CSA all the time. And I don't think a lot of people know what that is or what it stands for. Could you tell us a little bit about what a CSA is and the concept of a share, things like that? Right. So CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. And it's, it's really a symbiotic relationship between a farmer and a consumer, where the consumer puts up money in the spring when a farmer has lots of expenses and no sales. And so I use that money from their purchase of a share to buy seeds and fertilizer and hire workers and you know do everything I need to do to get a crop into the ground and 
so that we will have vegetables come June when the season starts. And they get 20 weeks, they get a box of vegetables every single week with six to nine items in it of whatever is fresh and delicious that week. And it's gonna be a different mix every single week for the whole 20 weeks. It starts with mostly spring greens and, and radishes and things that, that are you know very spring, think peas, things like that. You get into the heart of the summer and you get you know the tomatoes and eggplants and peppers and carrots and all the things we know about with summer goodness, cucumbers. Um, and then in the fall, we get the fall things. You get butternut squash and, and onions and potatoes and sweet potatoes and you know all of that. So it's a it's a mix that goes with the season, and it's it's really symbiotic because the CSA members get a discount on the food. We we charge them less than the value of the food they're going to get, and like I said, I get the the funds when I when I most need them before I get any sales, so I can get my season going, and it's worked out really really well. For, for me and for my clients and my CSA has grown and grown every year. Well, as someone who has a share, I have to say <laughs> that it has absolutely opened my eyes to the types of vegetables that are available in this area. Because, I mean, I've had picked up vegetables in my farm share that I didn't know about, that I hadn't heard of. And I think it's wonderful because it really makes us start to eat in a you know, in a seasonal manner and to know what grows well in this area. So I actually find it to be educational as well. And um, <laughs> as a very amateur gardener, I appreciate learning about, you know, talking to you about the tricks of the trade as well. Um, so I know that you have something called a solidarity share, and I was hoping you could tell us what that is. Okay, the solidarity share is something we we came up with once the pandemic hit and we really realized just like i think everybody did that these were really tough times for everybody but that people at the you know on food assistance it was especially tough and so i have to give my farm manager credit she's the one that came up with the idea um and so the the concept is that people that buy a csa share from us were given the opportunity to donate some extra money to the solidarity fund. And we use that fund to dramatically discount shares to be sold to people on food security programs. And I must say my shareholders are an amazing, generous group. And so we match what they give and, and we've been able to help dozens of families over the past few years get 20 weeks of farm fresh vegetables for very, very little money. And we've now got people that have been in that program two or even three years now. They've signed up already for this year and they're excited. Um, and it's just been a great, a great way for us to give back and for my, my customers who, like I say, have been amazingly generous to all give back at a time when we all trying to build community. And, and this was a way to do it in a very, direct and very local and very positive, you know, concrete way. We've been had a long history of donating food. Since my first year, we donated every all the food that doesn't sell at our farm stand in Belmont or at the farmers market in Watertown <clears throat> to local food access programs. So we donate in Belmont to food for free, which is based in Somerville. And at Watertown, we donate to the Watertown Food Pantry. We intentionally grow more food than we think we can sell. So that A, we have a nice variety for people to buy from, but then we have stuff left over. We always have stuff left over. And we said, we worked hard to grow this food. We want someone to eat it. And so we give it to people who are hungry. And we think that that just makes the most sense in the whole world. It's a really simple concept and frankly, food for free and the Watertown food pantry make it very easy for us. We don't have to go find the hungry people. These people know where they are. We give them the food and it, and it just works. So we like it that every bit of food we grow, somebody eats. And because we want that. And that's also kind of why we have something you've experienced in the CSA. We have our swap program, where as you mentioned, sometimes we have some unusual items in the share. 
brand new things that people haven't seen before or things that you have seen before, but you know your family doesn't eat. And traditional CSAs, you get what's in the box and you're stuck with it. And I'm like, if you're not gonna eat this food, it's silly for you to take it home. Like, don't take home food you're not gonna eat. Swap out the things you're not gonna eat for things you will. Other people might buy it, or if they don't, hungry people will, be, will love to get nice farm fresh mm -hmm. food that you are gonna throw away, they can eat. So I think it's it's good for my shareholders and it's good for hungry people. I think it's, it's kind of a no brainer from my perspective. Um, and I wonder why more CSAs don't work that way, but I, I, I can do what I can do. <laughs> well, I'm a big fan of it, even though we eat just about every vegetable. So, um, <laughs> but it is really wonderful to have those options. So can you tell me a little bit about how someone would find out about the shares and your farm stand and kind of how to get involved with this, um, in the process? Right. Well, I mean, you don't have to buy a CSA share to be my customer. Um, and some people, frankly, a CSA share is probably too much for a single person living alone. Or if you're just a couple and you eat out a fair amount, you know, it's going to be too much food. So then you just come by the farm stand. So farm stands in Belmont is on Sundays from 2.30 to 7.30. It's on Concord Avenue, right across from the high school. And that's where the CSA pickup is as well. Um, we're also at the Watertown Farmer's Market on Wednesday afternoons from 2.30 to 6.30 at Salton Stall Park, right next door to Town Hall. So come to those June, you know, June through the middle of October. And we'll be there with all of the food. That's where the CSA pickups are as well. To find out more about the farm and about CSA, you can just go to my website, which is farmertims.com. All one word, Farmer Tims with the S. Um, and we'll tell you a little bit about the history of the farm, what our growing practices are, you know, what are we trying to do, what the, we have a whole frequently asked questions about our, our farm share, you know, the CSA, and, and there's a link in there to sign up. Excellent. And I have one question, which I have personally just been waiting for the answer to. Will there be a seedling sale this year? Absolutely. Our Yay. seedling sale, uh, we just started this a few years ago, and we've been blown away by how, how many people just love to buy seedlings. And people say, Tim, why would you sell seedlings to people when you're selling, want to sell them vegetables? Well, I find gardeners are my best customers. Uh, these are people that appreciate fresh local food. We grow 100 different varieties of vegetables. In your backyard, if you grow 10, you've got a big garden. So mm -hmm. I'm not really worried about competing with my customers. Um, I know I'm going to be growing more things than they. Um, so we have a seedling sale. The, the distribution comes out. Actually, Mother's Day weekend will be the delivery time. We'll have more details of that on the website. But in the about the second week of April, go to the farm, to the website, farmertims.com, and look for seedling sale. And in there, there will be a ton of different varieties, everything you'd want, all the different uh, vegetables, flowers, herbs um, that you might want to grow in your backyard. And you order them up. We're growing. We've actually started growing some of it already in the greenhouse. And uh, you will get locally grown plants that have been grown without you know, chemical fertilizers in our greenhouses and their varieties that we know grow well in New England because we grow them on the farm. Great. Well, thank you so much. I, for one, am just waiting for that email to come out. And um, <laughs> like I said, I wait and wait for your farm stand to open because it's one of my favorite things to do is to come down on in on a Sunday. And it really feels like a community experience because you get to see all of your neighbors, swap recipes, chat about what's going on in the community. And it really, um, it's a wonderful place. So thank you so much for coming in today and sharing information about your farm. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. That's it for this edition of the Belmont Community Calendar. If you would like to see your event featured on this program, please email event details to access at belmontmedia.org. Thank you.